There we go. Hey, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Chris Esposito. I'm a solutions architect with uh, Clicks Data Integration Team. And uh, today we're gonna talk about uh, modernizing and automating your SAP data. And uh, specifically uh, on the agenda today, I'm gonna cover our, our QDI suite overview. Um, then I'm gonna follow that up with a, a replicate demo, which is our change data capture tool to replicate ECT SAP data and extract the data to any target that we support. And lastly, we have a guest speaker, uh, Thomas Oliveira, who's a member of our SAP team. He's gonna go ahead and cover how we could do real-time data warehousing with the order to cash model uh, from SAP. Uh, so uh, that should be real, real good. We appreciate Tom uh, joining us today. Naturally, if you guys have any questions, we kind of ask that you go ahead and add those to the chat. Uh, we have a few people from our, our team that are, that are online and they'll be able to answer some questions around today's session. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump straight to it. Uh, for those folks that are familiar with Click, we're all about uh, helping you with your data, right? We're about freeing that data, finding that data. We want you to understand that data. We want you to take action on it, right? I'm part of the, the Click Data Integration Team. And as you can see on the left-hand side, we really help you with, like I said, freeing the data, but the movement of the data, right? Taking data out of SAP and streaming it somewhere. Taking data out of SAP and helping you build a data warehouse or a data lake, right? Uh, that's what we're gonna talk about today. But on the middle and the right-hand side, uh, we do offer other, other products as a company, right? We have a click data catalog that'll help you um, basically uh, catalog your different entities that you have, whether they're in the data warehouse or the data mart or the data lake. We offer a real nice shopping cart experience where you can choose a, a handful of entities, then publish them to our analytics tools like ClickSense where you guys can start your analytics, right? And then later on this week, uh, you guys will be able to, uh, we have representatives from Click that will cover the Click data analytics side of the house right, uh, where we'll show you how you can do self-service analytics, embedded analytics, et cetera, right? But today we're gonna kind of stick to the Click Data Integration Suite and how we can help you out with SAP. And I spoke about this. These are the, the four core solutions that we offer. Click Replicate is our change data capture product. Click Compose will help you create your data warehouse, your data lake in near to real time. And we offer a Click Enterprise Manager too that helps you manage all the different uh, solutions that we offer in a single pane of glass. And lastly, we spoke about the Click Catalog, right? You guys wanna be able to trust that data, find the data, prep it, and publish it out to your analytics tools. We're able to help you with that. So specifically, I'm gonna talk about uh, our what we call our three main swim lanes, right? The first one, is change data capture. When it comes to SAP, uh, we can grab data out of SAP ECC. Uh, we could grab data out of HANA. We support a number of different relational systems, whether it's SQL Server, whether it's Oracle, whether it's DB2, whether it's HANA itself, right? And we could take that data in near to real time, the committed transactions, right? And and replay them downstream. And by downstream, I mean either on-premise or in the cloud, right? It could go to another relational target, like a MySQL or a PostgreSQL, or it could go to a streaming technology like Kafka or Kinesis, right? Or it could go to any of the, the, the data warehouses that are out there today, whether it's Oracle, SQL Server, or Redshift, right? We're all about taking that data near the real time and, and sending it downstream. Now, one thing we do really well uh, with our SAP offering is we do interact with that, that ABOP layer. We do install some transports that are gonna help you uh, extract the data, um, but overall it's a real lightweight um, configuration to get you up and running with change data capture. So just to let you know, we've been doing the CDC streaming now for I wanna say a good 15 to 20 years. Um, in, in the last couple of years, though, we've had our customers reach out to us and say, hey, listen, Chris, you know, help us out with things like data warehouse automation. You know, a lot of companies are struggling to create good models 
and be able to enrich those, mod, those models, do some transformations of the data, and then push them to a snowflake or push them to a redshift or SQL server, right? And oh, by the way, we want that in near to real time, right? So that's what we're gonna show you a little bit today. Uh, Tom Oliver is gonna show you the order the cache template that we created for our data warehouse automation uh, solution. So that, that, that'll be something really exciting to take a look at. In addition to the data warehouse automation, uh, we'll help you out with that managed data lake creation too, right? You may have a, a requirement where I need to take HANA data, for instance, and land it in AWS S3 or Azure ADLS Gen 2. And for the folks that are familiar with those types of file systems, they're just that, right? They're files on a file system. It's not a relational target, okay? So how do you stitch that data together to be meaningful, right? How do I do a historical look of my data in the data lake? And how do I take that data and maybe put it in a format that I can ingest with ClickSense Analytics, right? Maybe I require it in a Parquet format, okay? We do that all through the same common UI, right? So those three swim lanes, we call them commit to commit, commit to model, commit to conform, and we do all three really well with SAP. I mentioned earlier, we do off of that catalog, which is a shopping cart type experience, because at the end of the day, guys, you want to keep track of those entities, right? And once again, they don't have to necessarily be at the target level, right? If you guys want to go ahead and uh, you know, uh, catalog things at the data lake level or at the source system level, right? Let's say you have an SAP ECC SQL Server database and you want to catalog those objects. You know, there's no limitation what you can catalog and where you can catalog from, all right? And then once you catalog, we ask that you naturally use our products like ClickSense for analytics. We're not, we're not really limited to that, right? So we do have some customers out there that prefer maybe Tableau or Power BI and, and that's just fine, right? So these are our swim lanes. We do all three real well today. We're gonna to do a demo on the CDC aspect and the data warehouse solution. So let's kind of jump ahead for the sake of time. Uh, one thing I wanted to cover with this particular side that I feel is really important is when we talk about uh, helping you out with the data lake and the data warehouse, once again, we're talking in real time, right? It's gonna utilize our replicate tool to give you that real-time aspect. So think about it, as the transactions are flowing through SAP, they're gonna flow through your data model. They're gonna flow through the transformations. They're gonna flow into your data marts that you created, the star schema that you'll create with our warehousing tool, okay? So uh, that's real powerful, right? Things are happening in near to real-time. That's real-time data warehousing, real-time data lake uh, automation. Uh, naturally, uh, when, we, when we talk about different targets, uh, you know, guys, we play really well with all the different cloud providers, right? Whether it's AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, as you can see, we kind of have you covered, whether it's a relational system, whether it's related to Hadoop, right? Whether it's EMR, or HD Insight. I mentioned earlier, we're all about streaming, tech, streaming uh, targets too. We have a lot of folks that want to use Kafka, Kinesis, Event Hubs. Google Pub Sub, right? Those are all supported targets for us today. And naturally, what's real hot right now is taking data out of SAP and maybe putting it in a Snowflake warehouse. We see that across the board for all the three major cloud providers today, right? So guys, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, because we, because I guess we support all three. You don't have to worry about, God forbid, maybe in the future you switch from AWS to Azure or from Azure to Google Cloud. We kind of have you covered through the same common UI. Right. And this is just a matrix uh, that, that I put out there. I'm not going to cover all this, but we have the largest number of sources and targets out there in the industry, right? Uh, and those targets, once again, on premise, in the cloud, we can do cloud to cloud replication. We kind of have you covered. But as you can see under the SAP, we'll talk a little bit about the SAP target uh, source, excuse me. We do support Oracle, SQL Server, DB2 HANA, S4 HANA. And then all the different modules, whether they're ERP, CRM, SR, uh, SCRM, et cetera, right? And then we'll talk a little bit today about the extractors too. So let's talk a little bit more about Replicate before I jump into a demo soon, right? So Replicate is our change data capture tool, 
right? It's normally set up on a middle tier. So think of this middle, this little light greenish bluish type box because I'm colorblind. I really can't tell which color that is. Um, think of it, we run off a middle tier guys, right? And on that middle tier, what you're gonna do is it's normally either a Windows server or a Red Hat server. And on that Red Hat server, the only thing you're gonna put down are our binaries. Um, binaries, honestly, they take about 10 minutes to install on that middle tier. And then when it comes to the source system being SAP, what you may have to do is put down the SAP client, right? In order to communicate to SAP. Yeah. Outside of that, there are some other prerequisites you have to take care of, but probably the other biggest thing we put down are the transports in order to communicate to SAP. And we put that down on the SAP source system, okay? Now, as far as your target's concerned, it all depends where you land in that data, right? Let's say you go into a Snowflake target. It's mostly an ODBC driver by Snowflake, right? Or Postgres SQL, it'll be an ODBC driver. My point being to you guys is all you need is the client for the source for SAP and the target, whatever that target is. Now, once that's up, we do the following really well via the UI, right? Remember one thing is you'll see this in the demo today is we do not, you don't have to script anything out, right? So today when I replicate data at a SAP ECC, you're gonna see that I could select different tables from different business groups. And then what's gonna happen is we're automatically gonna build those tables on the target for you. Let's say you go into Snowflake, you got a hundred SAP tables. We're gonna build those tables out on the target. We know how to do the data type mapping from SAP to the target. And it doesn't matter what that target is. You choose it, we're gonna create it for you, all right? Also, what we do real well is, and, and for those that are familiar with Change Data Capture, is the target needs to kind of look like the source before you start the incremental jobs, right? So we do both the batching or the instantiation of the data, and we start the CDC jobs or the incremental jobs for you automatically. So you choose those 100 tables out of SAP, we load them to the target so they look a little bit like the source, right? And then we start the incremental jobs. So we're or automatically waiting for inserts, updates, and deletes, committed transactions to happen in SAP before they flow to the target, right? And then depending on the source and the target, we do support DDL change propagation. I don't believe that's supported in SAP. I'll have to ping one of our SAP experts, but we do offer, offer filtering of data. We can do basic transformations. And then lastly, guys, we do everything in memory, right? We want to be able to move this data in memory real time from SAP to the target in seconds, right? So, um, you know, for the sake of time, because uh, I'm already 30 minutes into it, I'm kind of going to jump straight to the demo, right? Enough of the slide where let's get to the fun stuff, all right? So hopefully everybody can see my screen right now. Um, this is our click replicate UI. And once the service is up and running, your team will be able to access our UI through any browser on the network, right? You just type in your URL and you get there, okay? And the first thing you guys are gonna notice is I have a number of pre-built tasks that have been predefined. And a task is just a replication flow, right? It could be from one source to one target or one source to many targets, right? We have folks that say, Chris, I need to take my ECC data and I need to deliver it to two AWS targets or two Azure targets, right? We support that type of replication flow, right? So just think of tasks as a replication flow. But before we actually can set up these tasks, we have to manage the endpoints, right? So today um, I'm gonna replicate out of ECC and the extractors, I'm gonna send them down to SQL Server. So I wanna point out some of the source systems that we're gonna to use today, right? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna configure your, for, for ECC on SQL Server, right? You're gonna basically define that SQL Server, okay? What kind of, what kind of authentication I wanna, do I wanna use, right? So as you can see here, I'm taking the lazy way out. I'm using my SA user ID, that's all powerful and password. And I'm able to test that connection um, via the tool. In addition to setting up the, the database endpoint, you need to have the SAP app server uh, configured, okay? And as you can see here, we'll prompt you for that information. 
What's the client number? What's the SAP schema name? What's the backend database that I just configured in the previous endpoint, right? And then you can go ahead and once again, test that out, okay? We're trying to make this as easy as possible on you guys. No scripting, we prompt you for that information. Same thing on the target. For today's target, I'm gonna use SQL Server. Hopefully I can find it relatively quickly. Um, where's my SQL target? SQL, there it is, local target. I'm replicating it to my local database uh, for SQL Server and um, I'm, I'm landing it in a database called ESPO, SAP. Once again, I could test that. So that's my target. Um, just to show you real quick before I jump to replication, if I were to do new endpoints, you'll see that, I mean, we have a whole lot. In addition, naturally today is all about SAP, but let's just say you had other sources out there, whether they're mainframes, whether they're cloud sources, right? Once again, you just pull this down. Look, we, here's our SAP extractor one, our HANA one, you know, SAP Sybase, right? So we prompt you for that information. We make it easy for you. And then you're ready to go ahead and set up your task, right? So I could go ahead and, and click on a new task. I can name that task, give it a description. It's unidirectional. Uh, I could do bidirectional and certain, uh, certain, depending on sources, we don't do it with SAP, but certain sources, we do support a bidirectional replication. Well, maybe you wanna come from the cloud back to the source, right? And then earlier I spoke about the one-to-many delivery. That's what we call log stream, okay? Now, earlier I also spoke about, we do the full load for you. This is kind of grayed out or blued out and we have the apply changes. We're gonna start the incremental jobs for you automatically. Now for the sake of time, I already had one up and running for uh, ECC. And the very next step is we show you this particular designer screen where what you do is you drag the source from the left-hand side, you drop it in the middle, you grab the target, you drop it on the bottom, right? And once again, I could go in here and verify that my environment's up for SAP, because that's always great to do, especially when you do a demo, right? Uh, and once you're done defining your unit, your, your flow of the data, now it's time to kind of pick out the tables I want to replicate. We do a great job, once I hit table selection, of going through SAP and providing you with the different business groups. So look at this, right? So whether it's related to the finance master or sales or finance transactions, whatever it is, I can go in there now and highlight, right? And pick the different tables that I wanna go ahead and replicate, right? So we had a business group that we customized that actually had different types of SAP objects or, sort of, or tables, right? As you guys may or may not know, we do support pool and cluster tables. We do support uh, transparent tables. We know how to unravel them and deliver them to the target, right? So for the sake of this particular demo, I choose a pool table, the A004, and a transparent table, the VBAC table. And I'm gonna go ahead and replicate to those particular um, to downstream target to SQL Server. Now I could start replication right here, but I wanna show you some really cool things that you could do to the data before it ever lands in the target, right? Um, let's choose the, the VBAC table, right? And I'm double clicking on it. And what's gonna happen, it's gonna give you some information about that particular table within SAP. It'll give you things about approximate record size, record count, et cetera. Now, if I click on transform, you'll see that this is how it kind of appears in the source. And this is how we're going to the output, how we're gonna create that table within SQL Server, right? We're doing the data type mapping, okay? We're gonna define the columns, whether they're string 30s or dates or times or whatever the data type is. Now, the beautiful thing about our UI is I can override the information here. If I don't think a string 36 for a name is good enough, I can make it a string 50. Or for instance, I don't like that we call it an ER date. I want to I want to rename that to something more significant for me, right? Or let's say I don't want half these columns. <laughs> I could delete half the columns. So we give you the choice of modifying it to make it look like you want it before you deliver that SAP data to SQL Server. Now, um, you can also do things like you notice there's an FX next to all these different uh, columns. Well, that's, a, that's an expression editor that we have built in, 
right? We offer a full-blown expression builder where I could use functions that are related to strings or numerics or date times or operation, right? So I can build out different expressions, right? Especially things like date and time. Let's say I wanted a Julian date, right? I, I want to take that SAP date, put it in a Julian date, stick it in SQL Server. I can do those types of things um, within the UI before I land the data. Basic transformations of the data, right? And then I can do things like filter that data, if the target supports parallel load, I could parallel load by data ranges or partitions, right? So we can help you move that data in near to real time. So for the sake of the time, and I have a lot more to tell you, I'm gonna go ahead and start replication. So I'm gonna do run, I'm gonna reload that target. And I reload the target, basically what it does is it goes into SAP, it says, hey, let me grab the metadata for those two tables that I selected. Let me load that data up to SQL Server. And you can see right here, um, we flip to like a monitoring screen where already we have one of our tables, the, uh, the cluster table, 1200 rows, and the VBOC table has like 16,000 rows. So we're going to give you some real cool information here about what's loading, what's queuing up, what is errored out, information about how many rows went, you know, transfer volume in megabytes, load duration, throughput of records, right? So now if, I, now if I bounce over to my little SQL Server tool and I already have, I'm already in my database and I do like a record count of the VBOC table, you'll see I got like 16,346 rows, okay? Well, now I can go into my, um, ah, my session kind of timed out. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and start that back up. So let's lower some of these windows and I'm gonna go into my SAP tools I'm going to connect to SAP. I'm going to type in my pass, my ID and password, and I'm going to generate some transactions, right? And naturally, you can select the middle one there, Chris. The continue this log. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There you go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is go over to uh, our little gold client tool and do some bulk change data capture, right? So I can basically go in here and say, do an insert of a hundred records. I want you to populate the transparent tables. I want you to do some of the pool tables. And then I'm gonna go ahead and execute this. And you'll see that we're gonna go ahead and insert records into those particular tables. Now, if I bounce back to my replicate UI and under change processing, Notice that this job, I didn't even really talk about this, right? We automatically have this up and running for you, okay? So it inserted, you know, 100 rows downstream to both these particular tables. Once again, guys, that was in seconds. Think how powerful this, this is to get data out of HANA, ECC, and deliver it to your target, okay? Um, and by the way, guys, we do the same exact thing for the extractors, right? Um, so if I just to show you real quick that uh, we do offer extraction out of the BW extractors, right? So whether they're related to the customer master extractor or the material master extractor or something related to sales, right? We actually have a, a part of the installation process is we'll actually put down a specific click replication X, X, XAP extractor on the source to help you get data out of these particular extractors. And like I said, it's treated like another source table per se, but as you guys know, these extractors actually consist of many different, depending on the one you choose, many different uh, types of SAP tables, right? So for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through this today, but I just wanted to, to show you that you can get data out of those extractors. And once again, feed it downstream, right? I could start this right now and this process would start. I could technically go over to uh, my SAP tool, come in here, look up a, like a, for instance, a sales order um, record. Hopefully I have an order number laying around for you guys. 15164, I could bring this up. You'll see here, this is a, I could go into the I'm into the header right here and I can modify this particular record and say order quantity equal to 5,000. 
and I could save it. Hopefully I'm gonna find the save and I could save this. And you'll see within a couple minutes, we're gonna get a flow here um, through the actual tool itself, all right? But just goes to show you how powerful we can grab data out of ECC, HANA, the extractors, very powerful. Um, so what I'm gonna do now too, and I'm sorry I'm rushing through this because I wanna really kind of show you guys the power of using SAP with our data warehouse solution, right? Tom Olivero from our SAP team is gonna basically cover our Compose solution uh, around how we could use a template called order to cache and you know, basically model that data, transform that data and then put it into different data marts, okay? So Tom, I'm gonna go ahead, hopefully you could, hopefully you have the ability to take over. Let me know if you can't, I can stop sharing. Yeah, sure, I can take over. It, it might be at the very top, the unshare. Yeah, I'll stop sharing. There you go. All right, let me, uh, let me share my screen. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, we can. All right. All right, Chris, thanks for that. Um, so hi, everyone. This is Tom Oliver. I'm the manager of the SAP Data Architect team here at Click. Um, and, uh, you know, we, our, my team supports all of the Click products that touch SAP. And I also have, we also have on a, I wanted to introduce uh, Vince Hammond. He's on, he's on my team. Um, he was instrumental in developing the um, accelerators <clears throat> and, that we have in Compose and I'm gonna walk through. Um, and it really, you know, it, what it does is it helps customers, you know, hit the ground running when they go to implement Compose, uh, especially with their SAP data. Uh, it, you know, every SAP customer is different. Everybody customizes SAP. There's not a single SAP shop that's exactly the same as someone else. So it really, you know, gets you going uh, pretty quickly and, and easily. Now, um, Chris just left off on the piece where, you know, replicating the extractors. And I just wanted to bring up this extractor that I'm, that I'm going to walk through the Compose model uh, around order to cache and how we're feeding that data to, to Snowflake. This is an example. So here's a list of all the, the current um, extractors that we, we leveraged in this case for the order to cache mo model. So again, those, the, the extractors, they, they're built into SAP. They're delivered in there. Um, you know, if, if a customer is not using BW, no problem. They're, they're still there. Um, and, and, you know, if the extractor isn't activated, it's a simple process, a simple transaction. You go into, you select the, the extractor you want to use and hit activate. Okay. When we, um, you know, Chris mentioned in, in Replicate, uh, we, we, we supply transports that provide some enhancements. So again, around the table level replication, those business groups that Chris showed you. And then also there's transports involved for the extractor uh, endpoint. And what this will do is provide this, this GUI that you can use to, um, to uh, first of all, set up a target logical system for us to use. So customers that are using BW right now, no problem. We're not gonna interfere with that process. We're gonna create another flow to another target logical system Again, activate the extractors that you want to leverage, and then you can manage them. You can delete them if you don't want to use them, not delete the extractor, but um, our, our setting in the dropdown when you select the extractors, and uh, you can you know add them or, or adjust them as well. Okay, so very easy setup. It's really just a couple of buttons, and there's more advanced features as well if needed. Okay, so these are the extractors that we're using. So when it comes to Compose, really straightforward. This is a model that we, we built again around Snowflake. Um, and initially what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up your, your data warehouse and your source database. Okay, real simple step. And you gotta remember that when you set up these, these endpoints, it's, in, it's capturing that data in real time. Uh, around the extractors, it is a, I could point that out actually, if we go back to um, the Replicate UI, for the extractors, it's more of a, a batch process that you can have set up as often as you want. It's not real change data capture because we're leveraging, again, those extractors in SAP. So we're also leveraging the SAP uh, Delta queues. So any update that happens in the SAP application, we're going to update that Delta queue. So now again, you can use the, 
the extractors for a compose, or you can use a table level replication as well. Again, the table level replication is going to be near real time, like Chris showed, we're capturing those changes as, as fast as, they, as, as soon as they happen. We're reading those logs, we're capturing those changes, where the extractor is going to be more of a scheduled process that you can schedule as often as you wish. Okay, oops, so go back to my um, compose screen. So again, you set up your, your, your source uh, database and your data warehouse endpoints, and then you can leverage our, our project. We deploy these and free to use, use uh, imp, imp, import them into your compose model and start using them. So this one we built out, what we do is we, we already have the relationships between all the different, in this case, we're leveraging the extractors. Uh, you can also leverage the table level of replication as well, but this is how we, how we built out how the connection is between all these different extractors. So how do we go from um, the 2LS 13 VD item, which is again around the, the order to cache model uh, it does the nice transformation and making that data business friendly, joining tables and, and fields from all the different SAP tables that make up the order to cash, like sales order data, materials, customers, all that stuff, and how we connect each one. We've done this and we built this. You grab this model and you're off to the races. Again, there might be some adjustments that you need. So there's a diagram view or also a tree view if you want to leverage that as well. Another nice feature that we did was we we created um, a, an easy, <laughs> easy I guess an easy view to understand the um, the the different names of tables and fields in SAP. <clears throat> so if you're not used to SAP, uh, if you, you've never worked with it, if you saw the field uh, ADR and R, you might might assume it's address, which would be a good assumption. But if you saw uh, the field BRSCH. Would you know that it's industry? Maybe not. So what we did was we put both of the options here. We have the, the German acronym of the original field, which is in this case, ERDAT, which is in, in English <laughs> created on date, okay? So we built this out for you so it makes it easy for you to understand and, and use. So there's a logical model and you also have the physical model from the here, okay? And I forgot to mention that what we're doing here, once you implement this and you make any adjustments, once you start through the process, it's really a, a, a flow. You, you'll create your, your data warehouse and your source database. You'll come in here and you'll build out your model and you'll click on validate, manage, and it'll automatically create all this for you automatically. And then what it's going to do is it's going to create the data warehouse and the data marts. If you click on this, you can see here all of the, um, the instructions. Really, if I click on ETL commands, these are all the instructions that uh, compose made automatically by just going through the 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 options and and clicking on the different um, the flows from from creating the data warehouse to automating the uh, the automating the data warehouse and the data mart. Okay, so simply clicking on these things, you can create this automatically. If you wanted to see what the instructions were for the um, this set this set here, you have the same commands. Look at this, 1,000, look at like almost, almost 1,200 ETL commands automatically being created while going through this process. The end result though, is what you want is at the end. For this case, the order to cache for Snowflake, if I click on the order to cache data mart, you can see all the different star schemas that we've built for this model. The sales order line items, the schedule line items, the billing documents, the shipments, all these other star schemas, and then also the materials as well. So we have the materials and the customers and how we link that data. And this is built automatically, again, just by clicking through the, the flow and creating this, um, this process. One more time that this is also all delivered out of the box, our order to cash. And we also have um, procure to, to pay model built, uh, inventory management. Um, I know Vince, you're on the line. What other ones are, are on, the, on the roadmap that we're currently working on? We're finishing up financial analysis. And I did want to also um, uh, supplement, uh, uh, as you were saying, uh, one of the great advantages of especially the compose, the automation. Those 1100 SQL statements, uh, those are created drag and drop, click, 
fairly automated, a little bit of, of manual and a little bit of scripting. But the nice thing about it is that as there's changes, as there's extensions, as, um, you know, of course, you as a customer employ our accelerator and apply it, uh, but decide how you want to tweak it. Um, you don't have to manually maintain those 1100 instructions. Uh, the automation is going to take care of it um, almost without, uh, uh, without any real oversight. Uh, so you'll get to actually concern yourself about how you'd like to manage the data, how you, where you'd like to pull it from, which uh, fields, which, um, which functions you'd like to use to make your calculations. And you don't have to spend a lot of time managing the uh, data dictionary, the structure, the load sequences, the ETL, it's all done for you. On top of, of it as well, we really want to democratize the process. These data marts, um, Tom, can you click back on that order to cash data mart? This accelerator has both a transactional data mart, all of the data down to the lowest level of detail, perfect for ClickSense, which is able to um, easily and in memory push out the aggregations, but also allow you to drill down uh, or rather to um, use our uh, uh, use our strengths to be able to show the lowest level. So as you select a region, as you select a material, a customer, even as you um, use the uh, provided mapping functions to, to um, lasso a, a geographic area, it's going to be able to tell you every single document at any level of detail so that you can say, well, this, this dashboard seems very surprising. That's not a number that I'd expect. And you can look into it and see, oh, this is how it added up at the lowest level but we also have an aggregate data mart. And what that does is it, it keeps it very simple. All of the calculations have already been provided. We've built out a lot of key performance indicators that can simply be dragged and dropped right into your reporting front end, right into ClickSense. So it really gives the power to anybody who's looking at analyzing the data, anybody who's looking at trying to track trends, not to have to interface with developers, not to have to be involved in project management, but instead simply to grab it and go. It's, it's pretty easy to start off with dashboards. It's pretty easy to continue to modify and continue to update reports. As you see, um, anything that, that catches your eye that, that you want more information on that you can continue to pull out of. As well, the Compose as well. It's really trying to help democratize the process. The automation and the simplicity and the accelerators that we provide help allow business users and users at different stacks to be able to interface with the lower ones as they're fairly self-service, very intuitive, very friendly user interfaces with a lot of automation. So it's not really a uh, high technical workload, but rather it's, able to be quickly adapted to the changing questions. Uh, thanks, Tom. I'll go ahead and yeah. pass it back to you. Yeah, thanks, Vince. Thanks for that. Yeah, it does. That, and that's the key thing about it is, you know, with, you know, seamless integration, being able to come in here, generate these star schemas and the dimensions, run them, uh, you know, again, Vince talked about validating, but it's really, you know, point and click solution that, you, again, not writing a single line of code, feeding your SAP data in near real time, and building out these um, data warehouses and data marts for you. Great. Thank you very much, Tom, Vincent. I appreciate your time today. That was a great session. And, and guys, overall, I hope you see the power of our platform. You know, we're, we're all about, you know, having you make that SAP data analytics ready, whether it's raw data, whether we're helping you out create the data marks within your data warehouse. So thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. We hope to hear from you soon. Thank you very much.